Hello, people of the internet. Welcome back to a very special episode of Ask a Muso, brought to you by Yellow Music. I, Connor Hanson, a prominent figure in the local music scene, will be interviewing Bailey Walker of the Bailey Drummer Channel. <laughs> Welcome to the studio, mate. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know you were coming so I could <laughs> unlock the door. No, it's good. I, 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 no, I don't usually give notice. Yeah, well, this is very peculiar for me. Um, I was not – well, I wasn't expecting this. We teed it up. I knew we I was definitely expecting it. Um, look, it's, it was, it's been nice to uh, have the conversation and to basically sit down with a very close mate and – basically be the one getting asked the questions. Um, and since he wasn't available, it was nice that you were yeah, able to step good. in. It was good that I could step in. I was yeah. going to say, we're not that close, are we? <laughs> no, it was nice yeah. that you were able to step no, in. That's it. No, well, look, Bailey, let me kick it off. I've got a few questions prepared. Okay, yeah, that sure, have all, sure, sure, all, sure. have all slipped my mind. Oh, sure, okay. Which is it. fine. Um, Bailey, where did it all start? Take me back to the beginning. Where back did it the start beginning. for you? Um, geez, I think music started for me back when I was, uh, like, in primary school, there was just the gazetted programs. Um, grade three was recorder. Uh, that was just what was available. Um, yep. I, I got up into playing into the into the band in recorder, but that was just ceiling in grade three was recorder. And grade four was then guitar. They moved you into guitar. Everyone did yep. it. It was actually part of music class. You had to do it. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then from there, after grade four, it's sort of like there is, there is nothing else sort of thing. Like you can keep doing guitar, but, but there's Completed nothing. Completed it. Yeah, there's, there's nothing like – there's no other in-school yeah. stuff for grade five and six. And I'd been tapping away from a young age and basically I sat down with mum and dad. I remember vividly I was playing PlayStation 2 and yeah. mum and dad sat me down in the family room sitting up against the, 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 the window and they were sitting on the couch in front of me and they said, uh, look, obviously, you know what's coming up – well, what isn't coming up. Um, you know, your, your grade four is done. Yeah. Would you like us to get – uh, music lessons for you outside of school, yeah. would you like them to be guitar or drums? Yeah. And I selected drums and still to this day it remains the most significant decision I've ever made in my life. Well, that's it. You even like mean. there's no Queensland, there's no Connor, there's no Chamberlain, there's no <laughs> Erin. There's yeah. none of the things that have occurred in my life would have occurred without without, the, the drums. without that decision. Yeah, yeah, without the drums essentially, hey. Yeah. yeah. Which is good. And then obviously the legal name change, Bailey Drummer. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, on the birth certificate. Yeah, that, is, um, that is what it says. <laughs> well, there was there was you know quite a few hoops to jump through. Yeah, exactly. um, the suits yeah, they yeah. were not impressed. They weren't. Um, no. Yeah, and obviously, Dad's getting weird looks at the grocery store because yeah. they're like, "Is it Lee Drummer?" And he's like, "No, it's no. Lee Beach Services." Yeah. So it was a, <laughs> um, with with lethal in brackets. So it's like That's it's it. a yeah, yeah. It's, it's look the there family. were there were issues, and we yeah. had to work through those. But for the most part, it was pretty seamless transition. Threw away all hopes of getting a pearl sponsorship <laughs> later on in life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm hoping that the F-Note one's going to come through soon. Yeah, that's well, that's, that's what we always do in front yeah. of the gorgeous well, F-Note. That's what I was thinking with a special episode of Ask the Muso, maybe that is coming. Well. Um, but no, to walk me through it, so like is there any, touching on that, any struggles sort of thing that you went through? I mean, I'd imagine there usually is. Uh, as like it, musically or Musically, just, I mean, look, I know what, you know. Just yeah, we, we've yeah. discussed off air yeah. what sort of led me to moving here and such. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, look, I feel like for anyone worth their salt, they have experienced or are likely to experience or know someone who's experienced a dislike bordering on like a hatred of your instrument. I feel like that's, yeah, that's absolutely. we're not breaking any ground saying that. That's pretty yeah. standard. Whether it be just, for me, it's a tuning thing. Um, yeah. Some people are like, oh, I can't get the tone in the amp. Obviously, that doesn't apply to me. But yeah. the, the tuning, um, I always wanted to be a drummer. I didn't want to be one of those stereotypical drummers like I've spoken about with Paige in a previous yeah. about, um, oh, a rock up. Yeah. Uh, boom, boom. You know, specific, I never wanted to be that. Specific sound. Eh? Yes, I want to be able yeah. to be, no, I don't necessarily have to be the best at my instrument, but yeah. I want to know that when I'm there, I'm the best at my instrument. And people know it's you. You know what I Absolutely, mean? Yeah. and and yeah. also that I can get out of a bind because yeah. I think I came through with stage fright um, yeah. because I was a very timid, very, very, very shy yeah. boy to start with, which I touched on in in my my big thing I did with Jed about stage fright, and part of that came, part of that journey came out with the realization that um, one of the, the key principles I need is to be able to get sort stuff out for myself. Yeah, because I had a couple of times where I forgot something, and I. Yeah. Ah, and I panicked. I literally panicked. Like, and I me remember those things and I'm like, I don't want to ever have to do that again. It was a very clear thing in my brain. Yeah. I never want to have to do that again. That's actually cool. I actually didn't know that because that, that actually, that makes a lot of sense, hey, because I've always thought 
you kind of like the master of preparation. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I've, that, I've that's what I've tried to be. You, I've never seen you unprepared, except for setting up for this podcast. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. man, that yeah. was. Don't that, worry, he stays unprofessional. For I was going to say his, that was yeah. low hanging fruit to everyone except <laughs> the audience, but fuck yeah, the, the wheels yeah. off the bus this evening. But. Um, yeah, how was that free speaking about names that I made you though? I anyways, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, but you know, you're right. I, that's what I've tried to be. I remember vividly. It's really embarrassing, but I remember that um, back when I was doing lessons at the Pean Music in Mornington, uh, which was which was the sort of recommended school that people yeah. would say it was very much like Infinite, where you, you're at the shop and then yeah. you just go all the way to the back of the shop and then it's where the rooms are. And I had someone uh, teaching me two teachers at um, over time, Alpha and Sam. And as part of that, I got a chance one time, I'm not sure necessarily why it was only one time, but maybe it's just the, regu- the regularity of how I did the lessons because mm-hmm. I, I chose to scale them back as I got yeah, later right. on in high school. And it was this concert thing and it was like, hey, you're going to learn one of these two songs. Yeah. And I was like, can I do that one? He said, oh, I've just found out from when the teachers meet that uh, one of the other drummers is doing that one. So you're yeah. doing this one and essentially you're going to learn... And then essentially you learn and then everyone else has already learned their bits. Yeah. And you've never met any of these people before. But there's right. someone who's doing banjo and they're yeah. they're part of that because there's a banjo part in the song. And That's then suddenly it. we meet on the day. Yeah. But we're all kids. So it's not like now when we just riff and tear it. And it's like, oh, do you want to yeah. be growing up tonight? Yeah, we haven't rehearsed it since yeah. we wrote it. Why not? Exactly. Yeah. It's not like that. It's literally I've never met these people. They yeah, practice right. on a Tuesday when they have their lesson. I practice on a Wednesday. Right. So in different yeah, times and, and but, everything. But yeah. they were the bass player and they all picked the, one of these songs and this is yep. the song we're doing. And I vividly remember that I left my drumsticks behind after playing. Yep. And uh, the next song was up and it was like an auditorium situation and, um, you know, it was like a, a flown stack about, you know, 50, 50 rows back or whatever. 50 rows back, yeah. And I walked down the aisle because Dad's like, oh, we should probably go now. Yep. And I was like... I don't know my sticks. Dad's like, Bailey, you man, you gotta go get your sticks. <laughs> so as he gestured for me to go down whilst they were playing and get my sticks, yeah, via the stage left exit into the foyer, yeah, I walked in the middle of the stage. Oh, really? I walked straight through the stage, got my sticks. Didn't really say anything to anyone. I wasn't embarrassed. I wasn't doing sorry guys. I wasn't doing any of those ones. I was just so... <laughs> you confidently ruined it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bite Everyone, me. That's it. Everyone attention. <laughs> I've left my sticks. <laughs> I'm going now. <laughs> I need them returned to my me immediately. My portion is done. <laughs> yeah, I... And I just was not really yeah. aware that that was the most egregious thing I could have possibly done. There you go. And I got a fucking... What the fuck? Really? Yeah. Well, Why are you walking through? And also, you didn't do anything at the time because mum and dad watching this train wreck on occur. It didn't affect anything. <laughs> the song kept Lethal's playing. just like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, like it how do. is... But, yeah. but at the same time, it's like the show went on, everyone did their thing. Um, You know, I'm sure there was about 47 parents in there that went, yeah. oh, this cockhead's never going to amount to anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> here we are. Um, So... <laughs> One so, day. So essentially, <laughs> that's... That was that. That's one of the most traumatic, embarrassing yeah. things that I remember doing. And at that point, I was like, "I can't sleep. Like, I, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't just be so in my head about something that I just go one track mind. And yeah, it's probably a bit of the spicy brain that I've got cooking up in the top <laughs> paddock. But yeah, at the time, I, I was just, I was obviously embarrassed, but I was more embarrassed about the fact that I had done it once. Mum and Dad told me that that was not the right thing to do. Not because I don't understand about yeah social etiquette but i just at the time i just went but you asked me to get him yeah i don't understand what i've done like i did get him i went and got yeah him. right i just didn't register I did just and then i was yeah. like oh my god this is the most embarrassing thing i've ever done why would i walk through the stage yeah. i could have walked around and it's just yeah. stuff like that and i think that was i don't know maybe a turning point where i was like i need to and that sparked the preparation sort of thing and it also sparked yeah. me getting my head out of mass for the yeah. the fight or flight yeah. I only have fight now. Because when, when, do... you, when you went on stage the other night while we were playing to get Seth sticks, that was a bit rude. But Yeah, that's fine though. <laughs> but also, um, uh, do, you, do you play music? <laughs> I didn't know you played. We were playing. Yeah. That was what we were, it wasn't a sound check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wasn't it? No, no, no. no that was the oh, there's yeah, only yeah, three yeah, people there, yeah, so I shouldn't yeah, do yeah, the yeah, sound well, check. No, 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 no. Sometimes we just, you know, you know, here's what it is. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. Fuck about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is I don't want to ask the questions, mate. But it's true though. You say that like I essentially got pushed into – Am I going to be so afraid and let this curb basically a fear of doing things or am I or not doing things or whatever? Yeah. Or am I going to let this be a lesson to be like, fuck, never let that happen again? Well, that's it. And I, without necessarily consciously acknowledging it, I was like, okay, I need to 
I'm not going to embarrass myself on stage anymore. Yeah. And it fired me up. I don't necessarily remember when I stopped being nervous to go on stage, but it fired me up to be like, I need to have this fight or flight locked in and it needs to probably be erring on the side of fight. Yeah. And that I think that it's a healthy thing probably for people to hear um, because you've obviously t- taken that and used it as a good thing that's worked as a service for you essentially later on in life, whereas you could have definitely gone the other way and gone, I will never look at another person again. You know what I mean? Like, Well, yeah. I had that thing happen not related to music um, when I on the second day I got my license. Now, this, yeah. this story, I'll tell a very brief version because it essentially curbs the whole reason we're sitting here right now. Yeah, yeah. But way back, it's stuff we've talked about. Yeah, off yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Car accident, second day of my life. Yeah, yeah. Um, the third, the, the, I parked the car uh, back at home when we got it home. We did the old V8 supercar sticky tape job sort of thing yeah. to get it home. Dad said, uh, I've spoken to a guy, we're going to get it done, whatsoever. Mm. I'll take it. Mum could have taken me to work those next couple of days. Yeah. But between us, we both said, no, Bailey needs to drive. Yeah. And I drove to work every day in mum's car. Yeah. And when dad got home, he'd, he'd swing by with mum so she could pick it up and then she'd pick me up at the end and stuff like that. Yeah. But I drove. That's I a drove really the big day thing after. to do, dude. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm never getting back in the car. Exactly. Like, I'm not, that's not a guarantee, but as you know, I got torn through the coals over something that wasn't my fault in that instance. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, I hit a shopping trolley. Yeah. I feel so embarrassed. I never want to yeah. drive again. It's driving yeah. scary. Yeah. I, you know yeah. what occurred. And, and, and yeah. It could have definitely gone the other way, but I was like, no, I need, I need to keep driving. hundred percent. I'm allowed yeah. to keep driving. Like it yeah. was not nothing that serious, but I was like, I need to keep driving. Otherwise I'm going to get a healthy fear, sorry, an unhealthy fear from it. Exactly. And I think that was the same feeling I felt in that early music period. It was like, oh, I'm either going to be really afraid of this or I'm going it, to figure out how to never be afraid again. Exactly. And it's, and, and, and that's, that's really healthy, dude, because that I can see it bleeding through into all aspects of your life, but particularly music, you know, and like having those sort of traumatic sort of things and just things that are sort of, I guess, playing your mind throughout your life and making them into a positive thing. And like seeing the videos where you've been teaching people how to cope with certain things like that. Yep. That's, that's pretty awesome, man. That's killer. And I think part of that has come from the fact that uh, like a lot of, a lot of people share things mainly yeah. because they, realize that they didn't have someone to share it. Like mum and dad have yeah. always loved music, big into live music. I've mentioned that in many episodes, yeah. how much they love music. You know, you know, Lethal's a massive part of the music scene yeah. with, and like him and him and Jules always come to gigs, but just the amount of effort they put into yeah. the local bands, the people in the scene, every band that I'm in, you know, dad was naming white sponsor on the Delacoma yeah. blood tour to the USA, all those sorts of things. But, uh, well, outside of a little bit of chinka chinka and filling in the numbers, dad was always behind the scenes. Uh, Mum played organ for a bit, but there was never any big driving push as I'm an instrumentalist. You can play my guitars when I grew up. It was nothing like that. Yeah. But they always supported it. But I still never had someone that did performing at a, at the level quantity that I have yeah. uh, was starting to do in high school. So I had to sort of figure out by my own yeah. how, how I'm going to be confident. Yeah, that's and how great. I'm gonna enjoy it, and I think there's probably in there is no better person to teach you that than yourself. You know, what yes. I mean? and you've got to kind of learn that stuff um, because almost learning confidence through other people can be a struggle. And yeah, you have this almost almost a lack of sense of identity. Like I've been there before. You know what I mean? Like I essentially would act just how everyone else around me was acting, and then it took me a while to sort of realize, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm my own person. Yep. Like, yeah, yeah. And um, ha- having to find a personality. So hearing it sort of the opposite way around is really cool, man. Like, that's sick, hey. I- I've watched the Stage Fright video back. Obviously, I've watched it back so many times due to yeah. editing it. But yeah. when I watched it as, as a full package yeah. uh, with mum and dad, I looked at it and was like, if I knew me, like I obviously knew me back when yeah. I was really shy, but I was like, yeah. I feel like this video is for people that don't know me, that are really yeah. just in that shy thing. They're like, this bloke is talking about stage fright yeah. and as a musician. It's not for someone that knows me. Not saying that it was necessarily designed to be for, you know, for Seth and Kane to watch to yeah. get a better idea. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't for people we know. But it's like they wouldn't 
it would be almost erring on the side of inauthenticity to watch yeah. it and be like, as if this bloke's not been confident. Yeah. I've never seen this yeah. bloke. He gets up on stage and sings songs he barely that's knows it. Yeah. because we nod at him. Like, as if he could be shy. Well, that's it. Hey, and I, I, it almost takes you back to, like, you hear certain bands talking about how they can't get on stage without at least having a couple of drinks, you know what I mean? And you get up there pretty well stone cold, just cold sober all the because time. Because I was playing gigs when I was underage. Exactly. And then yeah. when I yeah. became 18, I yeah. couldn't get home if I well, had that, Yeah, well, that's so it, just, hey. So that was the same, yeah, same sort of thing, I guess, with me was in, in that same aspect was that I'd, I'd always done it. Like I was always in the theatre, that kind of thing. And that that sort of up, upbringing and what I sort of, I don't know, based myself around as a kid is the reason I was so confident. But I watched that video from another perspective, just like it was just cool to see, you know what I mean, like what sort of tips and tricks that you had because I – I've never really had a method before, you know what I mean? It's just some, I've always just been able to kind of do it. But it was cool to take almost take a step back and realise that it is a very scary thing, dude, you know what I mean? Like what we do is a scare, it, it's, a, it's a scary thing in its own right, like getting up in front of people and sometimes you'll get up to four people and other times you get up to 400 people. Yeah. One day we might even get higher numbers. Oh, you including me as well. Oh, I've yeah. played in front of a big enormous map. That's all right, mate. No, no, no. I'm many me. Like I play music too. <laughs> oh, fuck, do you play? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I do. No, oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Yeah, look, hey, that's <laughs> good. No, you're right. No, you're right but I, I think I, I, I know. Just inject. I actually feel a, a variety of nerves that almost err on the side of bigger as the numbers are smaller. When yeah, I've got I'm fucking three same. people yeah, there. I'm, I'm the like. Same. Yeah. Don't make a mistake, yeah. Ed, because they're all exactly. they're all watching you. Exactly. Like, <laughs> but that's the thing. Like when I when I when we did the Smith Street thing, we were, I was really nervous before we walked out, and then we walked out and home sweet. surf soul bar. If there was five people in that room, I would have been nervous the whole time. Something about it, man. You know, and you can hear the coughs. Yeah. The, yeah. Like, <coughs> mm. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, and I've done one of those recently. Yeah. yeah that's really. Yeah. Uh, oh, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going to, yeah, we're going to get into your misery and all that kind of thing. But backtracking a little bit, yeah. um, when you were talking about how you'd rehearse on different days and all that kind of thing back mm-hmm. then, did that help? Because I've spoken to Caleb about the Delacoma thing mm-hmm. and he kind of just threw the songs at you and you'd learn them in your own time from what I've heard. Mm-hmm. Did that help sort of your experience of doing that kind of in the past anyway? Did that help bleeding into that? Sam Samuel Leskovec, he was my second teacher. Plays yeah. in uh, a bunch of bands in yeah. Melbourne, na- namely Fools, um, Doc Halbert, and he's a, a lefty. And yeah. he showed me. I think I actually got a val a valued lesson out of him being a lefty because we had just this um whatever B drums kit whatever in these yeah. music rooms, and he would play what he needed to play and yeah. sit in this like arse of like he'd sit. <laughs> yeah right and that was just because he that was the only way he could sort of properly teach it because he's like man i i don't cross over that way so but yeah. i've got to teach you how to do it yeah but from there it just gave me an absolute resource on teaching me how to learn yeah right so i think he was such a big portion of my skill in been on the ropes and stuff and, and, and figure out how to quickly learn a song with minimal yeah. time. Like in my high school time, I had d- down to as low as 15 minutes notice before gigs with songs I'd never heard before. Really? And that was just, what am I yeah. going to do? No, say no. Like I've got no expectations. Well, yeah. It is what it is. But yeah, h- him doing that and basically being like, I can't um, really do this exactly how you need it done. But he figured out a way to teach me. Yeah. That's the same sort of thing. He figured out a way to teach me much like I've now had to figure out when Dell gives me a call when I'm leaving the plaza car park and he yeah. says, Hey mate, potential to open the Smashing Pumpkins. You need a you reckon you can learn eight songs in five days. Yeah. It was a mountain. Yeah. And they're not easy songs, they're as not, you know. No, but well, that's, yeah. it just it just happened that way. It just yeah. went that way. And how long like, did it take you? Look, for me the process is sort of like I listen to the songs, um, like I definitely on the way home, I listened yeah. to the song. I didn't know which ones they were going to be, so I just played the whole Blood album. Yeah, listen to the songs. Go okay. I've, I've seen this show before. Which are the ones that I know a little bit? Yeah, and I knew Akashic, and I knew moving on to something new. Basically, yeah. the sum total was down and down and down and down and down. So the guitar riff. That's all yeah. I knew of Akashic, yeah. and moving on to something new. Yeah, I've been moving. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. That was the only bit I knew. It was just the, yeah. hey, hey, bit. <laughs> so there weren't a yeah. lot of use, but it was somewhat familiar to me. So I started there. Yeah. And from there, I just basically play with, in this case, with a beautiful F note down yeah. to fuck all. Yeah. And then the music is massive. So essentially, yeah. I'm just trying to, in this case, copy Noel's parts. Yeah. Um, and just get the hearing and playing, get it yeah. used to it. And then, but the main thing is, I'm running the first go, 100% arrangement. By the end yeah. of the second go, I already have the arrangement. Right. So you're pretty good. There well, the first go. thing is obviously I'm looking for time signatures and yeah. I'm looking for stops and weird shit. But then otherwise, I got the arrangement down in two goes. Yeah. And then I start to, and the second time, I've probably got the parts enough to be like, well, this bit, heavy crash, this bit, ride, this yeah. bit, hi hat, whatever. And then the third time, I'm actually trying to play what the drummer plays. There you go. And then we just finesse that until I run out of time. There sort you of go. And that's how I did it for the Delicoma stuff. That's how I do it for other stuff. That's how I do it when people say, hey, you reckon you could record on this or do this thing? That's my process is to get it, it down as an arrangement Effective thing first. Effective as possible too. Yeah, and yeah. I think part of that is I believe it was Beautiful beautiful Day. I think it was Beautiful Day that we played by you two in this in this in the yeah. music concert thing. Um, the only thing I knew that we had to all be locked in on yeah. was the arrangement because we were playing it to the track. Mm -hmm. So we had to be locked in on arrangement because we'd never met. We were only going to meet yeah. on the night. It was not possible to rehearse. So we had to do it based on you yeah. knowing that you're playing exactly as the record states and I'm that's playing it. exactly as the record states and the vocalist is thinking, I hope to crush you. Well, that's it, man. Also, keep in mind they're all about 13 years old. So, it's, yeah. you know, yeah. the musical IQ yeah. is not quite as high as it yeah, could be. that's so, it, yeah. There's lots of things. That, so that that's sort of how I've started it. And, yeah, Sam is uh, – it's a credit to him for how he helped me learn about learning. All my other mates who are doing guitar lessons and stuff, yeah. they'd be like, I like this, teach, show me. And they would show them how to play it and yeah. then they'd move on. He told me how to learn songs, not just learn a song. Yeah, there you go. And that's been invaluable. So that's for, like, almost foreign to me, eh? I mean, I've had to learn certain stuff, but it's like I just write a lot of the, the music, you know what I mean? So – even covers, like I don't really know, like you know what I mean? Like I've got like a select handful of covers that I know. So that's really impressive to me because it's a foreign concept. But like we played with Delacoma and then all of a sudden, yeah, you two were in the band and I was going to ask you like, was it the Smashing Pumpkins thing that was... That was what? the first time we played. Right, okay. So... Um, okay, it was the 27th of March or was the... First of April. First yeah. of April might have been. Might have been April 1st. And was Caleb playing that as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I'd already seen Caleb play with a band at Norton's. Yeah, well, that would have been with probably Treehouse or something, hey? Uh, I'm not sure. We got there. I can't remember where we got there, but I don't remember exactly. Oh, was he playing for Delacoma then? Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. right. There you yeah, go. So, yeah. he, so he got it earlier. It, it was, yeah, because, no, it was the same batch of shows, I think. Because you played at Brisbane. You played the Brisbane shows. We, yeah, we played with that Travis. Back. Yeah, yeah. Travis he, was yeah, on guitar. Back, Travis Hare, back room, ironically, yeah. is actually his name, but his hair is also gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. Travis Hare. Yeah. And then I assume it was, um, yeah, Caleb on bass. Yeah. And, and then, then it was like, a different guy on kit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. essentially that was the same thing that was at Norton's. So yeah. we went on the next night yeah. to Norton's and that's when I sort of properly met Caleb, shook, yeah. shook his hand and such. Um, and then from there, cause I, I knew of Dell yeah. because of the song we'd done together. Um, but it was the first time I'd actually seen the Delacoma show be played. Yeah. And like, I'd already said no previously because of just, I initially said, yes, I want to do the show. And then it had taken a few months before we were able to get off the road. And after that, yeah. I, was like, I don't have the time now. I'm too busy with other things. Yeah. But then when it came up after this, I watched it and I was like, it's the first time I not the first time I've watched something and gone. I could. Oh, it's gonna sound so cocky. I, I could do better, but it's just like I know I could nail that. Yeah. And oh well, these things happen. Yeah. And then afterwards, then I invite him on the podcast and such, and he's sitting at my kitchen table, and he's like, "So what, what's your availability like?" I was like, oh, "I'm actually pretty free now. You know which yeah. bands I'm not playing in anymore." Yeah. And I'm I'm pretty open to it, and he's like, "Yeah, look, if something comes up, I, I won't be a stranger." Um, yeah. because I want to have something that's a bit more solid. I want to just be throwing, pulling people together. I want it to yeah. be more locked in. And then that, that's sort of how it came Which to Which it has become, like, you know what I mean? Like that's, exactly. That's the line. And now that Johnny like, Boy's here. Yeah, well, that's it, hey. Which we really, love. We love well, John. That that really opened up because I've seen now so many versions of yeah, Delacoma. Yeah, you would like, have. Like, so that that really set it in almost in stone for me was when I heard John play at the precinct first time that I seen him. First time, first our first show in Australia with him. Yeah, yeah, and that 
that was all oh, really opened it up, like made it more full with the rhythm. You know yeah, I mean? and then being able to do those key songs keys, in a way that really just yeah. the things. And then it brings it down for those intimate parts where they just play. So, no, that was a really good touch, eh? And then touching on what you were saying about uh, how you had a lot, you know, a lot of bands. So we got Della Coma, we got yep. the Justice Trio. Yep. We've got, well, you had Sailing in Space. Yeah, well, Sailing yeah, in yeah. Space is, is there, but it's just, yeah. we're just on a bit of a hiatus at the moment. But, the minute, that's but it. it doesn't necessarily mean it's going yeah. forever, but, that, but yeah, that's, that's Better still. Better not be, yeah. yeah. And then we got Whistle. Hey. 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 Yeah. We're the pretty much, look, look at that. Whistle. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't actually planned, that actually but that wasn't. was great. That was great. Well, yeah, and I've no, also no. got Band from the yeah. Club, which has been something that I've. Um, oh, Band from the Club, yeah. With, so, with, oh, I knew I was forgetting one of them. Yeah, yeah. with yeah. Fun, Absolute yeah. Legends. But just, just to skip, oh, we'll go over to Whistle. Yeah, we will. The idea of Whistle, for anyone who wasn't aware, was songwriting for the sake of having a fucking good time. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, why Whistle? And you said, because their song is going to make people go, it's true. And there's another reason that I actually don't, like one of the first reasons I called it Whistle is because everyone says that I look like Josh Hutchison from Hunger Games and his meme at the moment is the Blow My Whistle tune. I don't know like why, but it's oh. just his. So I was like, Whistle would be kind of cool. And I was okay. Like, and then just I was like, why? And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it had it both ways. Oh, it works. It works both ways. But um. Yeah, no, that, that's that's good. So it's like songwriting for the sake of songwriting. It's me, you, Josiah from Chamberlain and Callum Meyer now. Yep. Um, and, yeah, no, it's been a great time. We wrote that song in mixed bag downstairs in your, in like, your kitchen. Yeah, had Palmer's. Yeah, and, you know, Palmer's, yeah. We just sort of tied it up. And well, we haven't, like, I think um, Aaron was just talking to us about. Just work. Just, work and just, just, just different people and we're like, oh, when it comes to, because yeah. she was working at the time um, in a very female-dominated industry. Um, in women's underwear, so it was like, oh god, women! You always get a mixed a lot bag. Of like clash of personalities, eh? And, and you like, just never know what you're going to get because it's yeah. just such a mixed bag of people. And it's like it's a mixed bag of people when you go to work anyway. Yeah. But it's crazy that there's some girls that she was working with that were just like so one way, and others that were so yeah the other way. And mixed bag of M and M's. It's just like a mixed bag, and yeah. But but the thing is, that we're talking about that as a topic, oh, wait, but yeah. the song, the song is kind of like not even really about that. Like mixed bag is kind of like um. Every almost just all the bad teenage sexual experiences that you have, yep. combined with wh- whether it be a crazy male or a crazy female, um, and that's kind of what the tune's about. Yeah, it's and also you are embracing. You being are a mixed almost, bag. Yeah, yeah. You, you haven't got it all sorted. No, you haven't got it all it. locked no, in. No, what you yeah, are, yeah, who what you, you are, yeah, what, what your you sexual yeah. identity is. Exactly. So it's kind of like touching on the, almost the gross stuff, the stuff that's like a bit, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I'm I'll get laid one day. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah. And she's here tonight. No. But that's – yeah, it's very true. And yeah. I think that's where it was born from and it, it ended up blossoming into something that was yeah, sort of a tit for tat of our creative yeah. ideas and with, with a link to sweets and yeah, candy. Yeah, reference to sweets, which it's was the cool. The actual like yeah. literal yeah. representation of sweets of and candy. A mixed bag of M&Ms. Yeah. yeah. To yeah. Then Plus have, the artwork that has the mixed bag well, of we got to love on. Beach for that. Just Beach is great good job. and he had to clean up all the M&Ms over his exactly. yard. Exactly. So that's like, funny. I was like, no, it was good. And we kind of just, we were professionals, weren't we? Bashed it out and what? Oh, well, look, I did drums myself because yeah. because it was just easier. And then um, I did the guitars and vocals and tra- bass and bass. Yeah, yeah, and then we did acoustic, threw some other bits in, some yeah, gang harmonies, stuff. Yeah, You'll yeah, like the gang yeah. stuff and the harmonies. If you haven't listened to Mixed Bag, please listen to Mixed it's Bag. A, it's a real gem, actually. I was like listening to it the other day. It's just one of those things. It's just like a – and that's kind of what Whistle's designed for. Yeah. It's almost that gem, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, whoa, that's cool, you know what I mean? It's exactly for that, just like, oh. Cool for the sake of cool. Yeah, so I mean, it's like, oh, I mean, that's a you know, it's a hidden little gem that one. It's good. Yeah, so, and from from tightening up Palmer plates and doing yeah. doing a couple of strums to the, the finished track, and then that's me it. producing it pretty much by the end of that week, and then well, sending you guys a few mixes back, and that was good. And Bailey produced it, which is a great segue <laughs> over to a band that I love very much of yours, um, very very much, which is the Justice Trio. Yep, um, and that's one of the things I wanted to touch on heaps. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask her, so you've got all of that. Um, essentially, you're taking on a whole other element of something different now. So, like, you've been playing drums in different bands, learning different songs from different genres. Um, 
now you're doing production for, mm-hmm. for both that and whistle. Yep. Um, but yeah, you, you're doing production. So yep. and having a yodel. As yeah. Well, well yeah. It? Well, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, getting on the on the on the um the old. Pod- no! You were struggling. Is, like, no, well, I can see well, the cogs turn. I'm like, loud noises. Yeah. <laughs> but that was actually the descriptive word that I was looking for. <laughs> exactly. Um, how is that? Like production. Have you settled in with that transition pretty well? Have you fell in love with it in another way like you did with drums or has it more been like a learning battle? I suppose for me, when I, le- when I, so when I left the Australian College of the Arts, I left early because... We wanted to move to Queensland. Yeah. So I'd done my diploma of music production. And in that, I'd met some people, got some ideas around incorporating tech into live. Yeah, Which right. is obviously what I've then done in the hybrid setting with with the Carlo project, with yeah. Selling in Space, um, multiple different times doing tracks and such. Yeah. So that was helpful. And then I'd done some demos and really I wanted to – capture my stories and, yeah um because a lot of a lot of my stories are a bit grim or whatever but to a soundtrack it's a bit more acceptable yeah and i wanted to basically capture my stories musically and whilst i didn't have a big group of people i didn't have a big friendship group any of those sorts of things especially yeah. in victoria well mainly in victoria i didn't have any of that <laughs> so i i had this as an outlet to do um and i couldn't play drums for 47 hours a day yeah that's so it. i was like i'm gonna have to figure out how i can sort of utilize what i know yeah and then and then the other thing is just the sheer thing of when you learn something you go oh, i want to fiddle now i want to try and yeah. learn how to do it now yeah. i want to do it for me now i don't want to have to do it as a as a as a yeah. course thing i want to be able to do it for fun now yeah. and as far as that was part of what i did was i i got the bug for it and then progressively um, i upgraded the quality of the gear yeah um, i upgraded the quality of my further learning through, you know, YouTube videos and just asking yeah. people stuff. I listen to more things. And then progressively I've just learnt and been steadily on and off, steadily yeah. growing my knowledge on taking things from um, a bit of fun to a pretty good demo to yeah. a polished demo yeah. to a average song to where it is now, which, is now, which, which I think is really good. At a, at a level that, that stands up against stuff. Um, I think it's great. Yeah, because I was listening to it before yeah. just through those the Mac speakers. Oh, yeah, the Justice Tree record songs. Yeah. If it sounds good coming through Mac speakers, it's going to sound good coming through your car. You yeah, know what I mean. So that and it sounds great. And um, have you have you fallen in love with production, or has it been more almost almost a chore or anything like that? You know what I mean? Because whenever I I used to try and do the same thing before Chamberlain, I had my own like little solo project that I had, and it was all produced by me in my bedroom. Um, I was just no good at it and it was a bit of like a, I don't know, I just used to kick myself, a bit of a chore. So have you fallen in love with it or has it been? I think for me I find that I'm at the level where, like it goes back to the preparation thing. I'm so prepared on all these things and I got all the plugins and I got all the taking this setting from that thing and built the session so it was all the tracks. All we have to do is just go boop and start. That's it. But because like I'll put the effort into the song or especially writing the song. Yeah. My bit's over pretty quick. Yeah, exactly. So you might as well put so, the remainder of the effort. Yeah, but also yeah. I go sometimes I get to that point where I'm like, fuck, my bit's over pretty quick. Yeah. And yeah. then I'm like, so now I know that I'm sitting down to this for the rest yeah. of the time. Like um like doing stuff with John and Caleb, like we got the, the rhythm section stuff done pretty early. We also just got down some some yeah. rough guitars. A lot of them were sort of a bit out of tune. That was a bit rough as guts, just yeah. getting parts, just something that Caleb could play along to. Yeah. Um, because we had just a vocal and a electric guitar single track mm-hmm. thing of John for me to play to. So I had yeah. proper arrangements and then from there it was all just built off me and yeah. that was cool. But obviously it was all built off me. I did drums in like three hours, yeah. make it through. I did in one take. John yeah, always right. tells people when they come around, Oh, make it through. Sounds good. Oh, Bailey did that in one take. Um, but <laughs> I, I did, I did drums in one take for that because yeah. he looked at me, yeah. he smiled and I said, I wouldn't change anything. And yeah. then we just moved on. Yeah, like, it's good. When that happens, man, too, like, you know, it's the one. Exactly. Like, yeah. So, but when I played that, John was buttons, man. Cause he's yeah. done garage band. He's, he's mixed, mixed about. And obviously getting this, um, scratch track for us. Yeah. He'd, he'd had to do a little bit of pre pro mm-hmm. to get me something in garage band. So he, he, he could be buttons, man for me. Yeah. Um, and it was nice to be able to do drums and not have to fiddle. It yeah. was definitely nice to just sit and do them. Just, just do them yeah. and not yeah. have to fiddle or touch or go, is that actually working? Are those yeah. mics on? All that stuff. That was amazing. Which is probably almost the perk where it compares to being better than your standard bedroom musician where you kind of do everything yourself, which I have another level of respect for. But it's like 
having a band setting where you've still got your mates to help you out. Yeah, because it makes it more cool. fun anyway. Yeah, it does. Well, you're already having a laugh, so you exactly. might as well record it. Like, yeah. It's like, but when I think about like the whistle track we did, when we did Mixed Bag, obviously we did it in a few hours, your yeah. parts with Beige and stuff, and that was awesome. But you times that by six. Yeah, right. Suddenly, Balos is doing a lot of sitting in the chair whilst you guys are playing yeah. all the music. Exactly. Yeah. And I suppose it doesn't mean I dislike it. When I listen back to these tracks, like, yeah. for you to, and for the beautiful Delica Maria to both say that there was an emotional response to yeah. just. Something that's like at ninety five percent without a master out of the yeah, back speakers. That's it. That blew me away. Um, well, and to be good. able to hear that is very special. But just sometimes I think maybe it's just the ADHD in my brain. I'm just yeah. sort of like, fuck. The drums were done pretty early. That's what I mean. Can I do a harmony or can I shake something? Can, can, can well, I have that shake? Can I do something? Like it does. Yeah, you get almost restless. I just get a bit antsy. itchy. Yeah, I don't get bored yeah. with the production side. I just get. I don't know, a bit selfishly bored that I'm not having... Yeah. I don't get to play because you guys are all playing. Well, because the and production I'm just going, side, that's all pretty well done post anyway. And then you've got more buttons to fiddle with and you can play around with anything. Um, but I, I completely agree because even when we were doing Mixed Bag, it was a lot of you were just in the chair hitting the buttons because uh, you'd done that part, you know. And but I'm doing basic finally, balances. Yeah, but exactly. But you were getting up to sing some vocals, which was really cool. Um, but, yeah, like I think with, with that... Because Caleb, Caleb and you play together as well in Delacoma. Um, so that might help. Like, does that help how tight you guys are as a rhythm section being in two bands together? Because I've always oh, thought that, hey. I think so. Yeah. We, we were in early. Um, uh, there's there's a Porter and Davis um, yeah. uh, rumble mat and yeah. stool. Right. So he's playing bass and I'm getting I'm getting a gentleman's workout. Yeah, well, yeah. In the butt, which is so – I've never sat in a store like that before. Yeah. Like, they're quite comfortable, but yeah. it's that other level when you've got a speaker on cable in the bottom of it and you're feeling the bass in your butt. Yeah, it's um, And then thing. he's feeling the yeah. kick drum in his feet. Yeah. So that was unbelievable. But I just think together, even you, though – You fucking loved it, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but even though, even though after we – like, after we've essentially tallied up the number of how many times we yeah. have legitimately played in a band in front of an audience together yeah. – it's fuck all times. Like with the exception of the US where we played quite a few times together. Yeah. At that point we had only played a handful of times together, but we just locked in. Yeah. We, we just locked in. I just really was seeking him. He was really seeking me and we just fit. We just really work well together. Yeah. And I fucking love playing with Caleb. Really good energy. And you jealous friends, which is an, it exactly. brings another We've thing to it. We've only been able to get yeah. closer. Yeah. Yeah. Touring I twice think, together. It's been nothing but brilliant on that. Well, front. that's what I mean. I think you like, you're pretty lucky. I mean, this is just from an outsider's perspective, but you're pretty lucky with him where you sit with all of your groups now because you're quite good mates with all of them. Like you get along with a band from the club, sailing in space, you know what I mean? Like, and that's important because you meet a lot of bands that have members in the group that almost like they don't get along. And I've been in that Yeah, you know what I mean? But like, I'm lucky, fortunate enough to never have, like I'm in two groups, um, well, three with Whistle. Mm -hmm. Um, And I like, you know what I mean? I love everyone in all of them groups. So it it does make that easier too when you have that energy and that connection. But I'd honestly, this is going to segue into – one of the last things I wanted to talk to you about, I was having a conversation with Hayden who plays in Space and Ages, mm-hmm. who, interviewed, who also plays in a number of groups. Um, and it, yeah, yeah, top dude. And I, I think one of the things that we spoke about when I saw him last was about balance. And you're in just as many, if not more bands as him. Uh, I'm only in the two and sometimes I even struggle and I know people that struggle in one. Mm-hmm. Um how do you find the balance? Because I think one of the healthy things that you've got to do for yourself is have that balance with a personal life. You know what I mean? Because I, I, know, I know when I was speaking to him, he was talking to me about how the year prior he was just consumed with only that. And as musicians, it's kind of, you know, it's the dream, isn't it? You know what I mean? To only be doing music. And, I, and, and you know, that's that's what I want to do. I'm not one of those people like you see fucking nowadays complaining about, you know, whatever. But I think there is this 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 other side to it where it's like it's definitely so healthy to have that and just downtime, you know what I mean? Yep. And it's easy to get burnt out in, in all of that. So I don't know there's a lot of musicians in different groups and, like I say, struggling in just one. How do you deal with the balance of music life, personal life. Erin plays a big part in it. Yeah. Um, she, she's obviously involved. Um, she's, yeah. I, 
like put the bias hat on, take the bias hat off, whatever. One of the best photographers on the coast of live Yeah, I oh, no, I'd, I'll um, vouch for that. And I think as part of that, as part of that, she, she definitely tells me when I um, should pull back, whatever. Yeah. John's been great for it as well. Like um, right now, Aaron's away and – with the exception of seeing your lovely self, um, I could spend the next unlimited amount of time until I feel like I want to go to bed, yeah. jumping in front of the screen, finishing off some more mixes. But I don't think they'll be at the same level. And I think part of it, yeah, part of my understanding of balance has come from um, doing shit work, yeah, <laughs> and realizing yeah. that it's as a result of uh, not being there. Yeah, um, it's the main one's been being unwell. Like yep. I wasn't at hundred percent before we went to Ellie because yep. I was go, go, go 47 podcasts a week. Yeah. I remember you and saying. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to have to pull it back on Ellie in yeah. a couple of days. Yeah. I stopped and the body went, oh, thank fuck. And then just. It just all me. cut caught up with your hand. Just hit me. Yeah. And then I had two days where I was just, I had to take off work. I, I just couldn't even move. And yeah. I'm like, I'm going to have to drive 14 hours to Ellie Beach. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Then those sorts of things, like those you still wake up calls. Well, that was it. You still weren't quite hundred percent when I spoke to you like the day before. No. Because we met up at Caleb's, like you were picking Jet up. And yeah, like you would, you, you would tell me about that. And you yeah, know, exactly. It is a scary thing because I've had it happen too. Like you just go, 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 go. And the moment you have a second arrest where you think that's what you need, it all just knocks you. Exactly. And like yeah. I was thinking, you know, that sort of happened. Um, I got something similar. It was like a 24 hour version when we were yeah. in, in the States. I remember being, we just finished our set um, after Illinois, <clears throat> playing at West Dundee, Illinois, yeah. sort of like a theatre sort of place, old movie theatre it actually was. And uh, good setup and all that and packed down the drum kit and stuff. And as I packed down the drum kit, I said to John, because pretty much we were Tetris 1 and Tetris 2. We were yeah. we were putting together. Yeah. You could have fitted a second <laughs> drum kit in the back there <coughs> yeah. compared to the first time we ever put it in there. I don't know yeah. where we found the extra room. Yeah, it just happened. But yeah. we just got it down to a fine yeah. art. And uh, that was cool, but I put down a couple of the like the traps bag and stuff, and I was yeah. like, John, I can't move. I'm gonna probably go in the RV. Yeah. Hit the deck. Yeah. And I don't think I'll be able to move for a few hours. And yeah, that's true. Right. Like I yeah. was like, I had the shakes. Yeah. I'd eaten plenty, and um, I wasn't really on the terps because I wasn't feeling 100. percent Um, but I hit a wall, and yeah. I fell asleep for probably about five hours and then it was only when yeah. they sort of were stirring when they stopped to then get sleep after stuff. And they yeah. were all fine. I'd done yeah. a load yeah, yeah, of work yeah, doing yeah. stuff. They weren't like, oh, yeah. what's this guy getting slacking off for? <laughs> yeah. Caleb slept for 47 yeah. hours a day. Like, yeah, they weren't yeah, mad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, Slacker. <laughs> <laughs> but by the same token, I was – it was one of those alarm bells. Well, not alarm bells. It was just one of those – Yeah, it's a wake-up call, It's just a wake-up call. Yeah, because, yeah. And it wasn't like I – I wasn't aware. I know these things happen. But yeah. I suppose – the warning signs are few and far between sometimes, yeah. and it can just yeah. be like fine, 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 dead. That's it, hey. Um, but the balance, yeah. but how? But to actually, sort of circle back to maybe strategy on how I figure out balance. Um, I allow myself to do like I'm a very much a waste not want not yeah. person. So yeah. if I buy a new camera, we're filming a video next week. Otherwise, it was a waste of money. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. When yeah. I when I got this, I yeah. was like, I play gigs at venues that won't have acoustic drums. Yeah. Yes, I can practice at home. Yeah. Yes, I can do that thing I just did then, you know. Exactly, yeah. But I know I can play gigs and I've got three gigs coming up at a venue yeah. that won't allow an electricity drum kit. It's just paid for itself, you know. Well, it's perfect because and, there and is – I've played yeah. it so many times. Yeah, exactly. But in my head, that's fine. For yeah. instance, I traded in pretty much every single bit of gaming console gear I had yeah, right. before we moved when I was at uni and I got a Switch. And yeah. I'm not a, addicted to it or anything like that, but I have it. I bought games for it. Yeah. I don't want to have them sit there. So yeah, exactly, yeah. For me, the balance is when Aaron comes home, we have dinner. If I really have some mixing to do or obviously if I've got a podcast episode yeah. that either needs to be edited really badly or it's almost done yeah. or I have a guest. Yeah, yeah. With the exception of all of those things, we're sitting down and we're either, you know, watching a bit of Broad Church, a bit of Doctor Who or something. That's it. Or we're playing Zelda or something and we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're playing games exactly. together because yeah. we get to engage with each other's time. But yeah. Away from everything too. Yeah, yeah so it's not which even just good. like say, so, yeah. like not yeah. that like, Aaron finds small talk quite depleting of the social battery sometimes. Well, it is sometimes. It's tedious. But it's obviously yeah. different when it's yeah. when it's your long term partner. But by the same yeah. token, 
it's disengaging because me saying, hey, baby, how are you today? You know, yeah, once, yeah. once I've actually understood how she's feeling for the day, yeah. I don't need to go through the list of the small list talk of things, questions. Yeah, we yeah. live together. It's, it's, yeah, and you cater towards what she needs after that day. Exactly. So yeah, we figure it yeah. out and then yeah. we get to share something that we enjoy together yeah. that is just for the sake of it. It's Which a, it's will be the like whistle the highlight equivalent. of someone's day. You know? Exactly. It could be the highlight of yours, hers, anyone's, you know, and that's yep. – I found that so important, hey, like even just – I've had a bad habit of doing the same thing, burning yourself out, you know, and and that, not to get that confused. I mean, you've you've toured. I mean, you've toured loads of places now. Like you've toured America, you've toured. I mean, you went Northern early, Queensland. Northern Queensland, <laughs> you know. And we we've done the Sydney, went to Sydney through New South Wales, mm-hmm. uh, and then recently we've been up to Rocky and stuff. And I was having a conversation with Josiah uh, when, when we were at Rocky. So we'd done this big drive. And you get that, you know, you hit that sort of point before you play where you've been in the car all day, you know what I mean? And that's a big thing, you know, and I don't want to talk about it like it's complaining because I love touring, you love touring. We wouldn't do touring if we didn't love, of course. you know what I mean? Playing, there is a certain... Playing is such a small portion sort of, of touring. Mean, it is, isn't it? But it, I think there's something so special about playing your music in a place that you don't live or where you don't come from. It's a it is almost... Um, there's also there's another level of specialty to that uh, and, and it feels great. But I was talking to Josiah about it and, you know, you hit this, there's always that wall that you hit. Usually it's a bit before you play and we're sitting down and eating and it's like, nah, but we we chose to do this, you know yeah. what I mean? And and every time that I often, well, like you, they, you know, like we were talking about when you have that wall that you hit with your instrument and all that kind of thing, it's a similar thing. Sometimes you'll sit there and you'll go, what am I doing? And then you go, no, well, I chose to do this because I love it. Like, yeah. There's obviously, there's a reason I chose to do that. Yeah. And I think that ties in nicely with what you were saying is just like um, having that balance is so important and having the things that you like in life that might be maybe a little more, I don't know, like not, it, it's just that stuff that little, like playing games, stuff that might not be an absolute priority in your life playing video and stuff but it's almost a necessity to have there for when you need a break of burning yourself out because us as musicians you know we're also working jobs these days mm-hmm. that's what a lot of people almost don't think you know some people will talk to me like oh are you making good good bank doing that and it's like well we i don't see any of that money anyway like mm-hmm. we make probably a decent little bit of amount of money at gigs but i don't see any of it it all goes into a band fund Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's how we bring out songs and that kind of thing. So I do it because I love it and you do it because you love it and that's the right reason to be in it. I think that's where I've looked up to you in that sense of just like it's so good to see because you're in so much stuff but you still have all this – got this big schedule. You work on top of all of that and you have time to just catch up for a feed and a (laughs) – it's and pretty that's hats important. off to you, man. And hey. that's freaking important. Yeah. I think that that's yeah. that can't be undersold. Like yeah. I, I love having like a bit of game time and, and, yeah. and those those things that are just yeah. just nothing things that are that's just a bit it, of fun. Hey. And yeah. I think that is important for balance. And I also think that it's important to like I'm a big fan of this this uh, group called Yes Theory. And the idea is yeah. the opportunities that you could come up in the world if you Simply say yes. Yeah. And about seeking discomfort and yeah. and strangers are just friends you haven't met yet. And I love yeah. all that. And I was a big, big fan of that. I've actually got friends that I met through that yeah. school. And I actually met one of the owners of the of like starters of the of the channel when I was actually in America the first yeah. time. Yeah. And um, Thomas Bragg is a beautiful human being. And that was cool, but I have quite a few examples of the long term benefits of having said no. Yeah, dude. I had three bands on, yeah, and not much time. And I was thinking about maybe doing some more of this yeah. podcast thing. Yeah, I told I told Delacoma Rio no. Yeah, he does his bit. Then he like with respect, he's done a lot of stuff, but he grows a bit more into understanding how things work on the coast because yeah. he was originally from Victoria as well. And he comes back <laughs> to me, not so much on my terms, but like yeah. I'm doing the podcast with him because I want to level with him. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. there's actually no agenda, I wasn't like, oh, this would be a good chance for me to get an in. Yeah, 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 I wanted yeah. to talk to the bloke thinking we probably wouldn't play. Yeah. I just missed that just, ship it sailed. That's it, yeah. And then we get the talking and uh, what's the next thing that's going to come up? Then a thing comes up, as it yeah. always does with Dell. Yeah. A thing comes up At and a better I've been playing time, with them ever since. Yeah, because I think if you'd said yes at a time where you maybe didn't want to say yes, I think that y- you might – 
sometimes as human beings, we have that human condition where we almost make up this thing in our head and it, it, it almost would drive you a bit away from it. And there's like probably maybe a little bit of something you held against it. Whereas when you do it on your own terms, then you're happy in the position you are. And I think that's actually, no is one of the most important words in the human vocabulary. It's about knowing your limitations. Yeah, it's not exactly. simply I don't yeah. like that or yeah. rejecting it. Yeah. Like, for instance, podcast season two, Matt Lebetsky, the man who is yeah. Brisbane drums, 50% of Nostra makes some of the best drums yeah. money can buy. Yeah. I hit him up for the pod. He's in South, South Brisbane. The yeah. lockdowns are yeah. every third day. That's I don't it. know if I'm going to be yeah. actually legally allowed because of the princess in charge yeah, to be able to actually it. drive yeah. down to like essentially Northern Logan. That's it. I, I fucking hate establishment, man, and yeah. everything they fucking stand for. I know this has kind of gone off on a tangent here. Well, I was just going to say, just before we go <laughs> yeah, off on a tangent, no, no. Which, just, yeah. which just, he says, yes, I get that. I yeah. love with the pod, but he's like, I don't want to do it until you're ready yeah. to come and see me. Exactly. So I say, yeah. no, let's wait. We wait. We do it in person. It's yeah. one of the best, most genuine yeah. chats I end up having yeah. with someone because I waited to do it and have the conversation. Yeah, exactly. And I actually have it as a highlight yeah. you can listen to on Spotify yeah. now because it was exactly. it was worth waiting for. Exactly. 100%. And, and he's on better terms. He's like, oh, my God, i got to do this. You know what I mean? It's and like, he said no, no it. Yeah. essentially. Yeah, because he's exactly. like, I don't want to do it with all the... Yeah. The, the digital stuff. How about we yeah. just do it with the camera and we sit like boys exactly. and have a chat and have a coffee. And it's way better to watch, man. Like mm-hmm. I struggle to watch some of the Zoom stuff sometimes, the different people, because it's like that human inter- aspect of it's so good, which is sort of tying into what we were saying about how you and Caleb play together so often and you get along. And I think it's so important to get along with your bandmates, you know, and like if you're not – I used to when when I'd see bands that would break up because of differences or just because I didn't like I used to be such a like oh you're an idiot like you threw something away just because you can't get along but I think there's almost this aspect where it's okay to say there's a lot to life that's more important than that and I think if you're unhappy we live for such this short fucking stint of time what's the point of being unhappy for... Or hanging out with people that... that make you unhappy, you know? Like, you know, you've been there, you know what I mean? Like, like, And and let's wrap it up. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? And that's the thing, but it's like... And there is, there's a lot... I was talking to people about it and some people don't agree. There's a lot of of negativity that can surround the music scene as well. Um, You know, some people don't quite agree with that. And I think that at the moment with the cost of living crisis, it's being pinned on the wrong people. Like I've read a lot of stuff about people almost like musicians, like having a cry. It's like, oh, punters don't support live music anymore. I don't think that's necessarily the problem at all. I've been to shows recently, like when we went to Trillions, it was a free show, Uh, but it was, there's a lot of people there. There's people, so many people there to support live music. It is not a punter problem. This is a establishment problem and a cost of living problem. People the punter is a person. With exactly a right. Exactly, and they can't, and with how high the cost of living is right now, fucking it, like it's hard enough to pay your rent or mortgage, let alone fucking go out and grabbing a beer, a schooner for twelve ninety five. Especially when you're tooled yeah. down, like, yeah. like to go to a gig because you're playing it. It's like yeah, there's costs yeah. associated with that. I want to make sure that I'm not paying exactly. no one. I just want to make sure I'm not getting seven cents exactly. of my time. Yeah, but to be a tools down punter, like yeah. the amount of band boys and girls that were at that Trillion show, yeah, we're all there tools down. Oh, 100 percent. I was like, yeah. obviously, I'm out there helping Jet when things That's fall it. apart. But yeah. we're, otherwise, we're we're literally tools down. We're exactly. all there to see live music exactly and because we love it. Yeah, and I've mentioned that. And episodes yeah. recently like with yeah. Jedos last week yeah I don't think you can honestly say you like cricket if you don't watch the Ashes I don't think yeah. you can honestly say you like the footy if you exactly. don't watch the grand final in September well, exactly. I don't understand yeah. how you can say you love music as a muso as a band member if yeah. you don't come and see shows exactly yeah exactly exactly so there's that other side to it but I really really do not believe that it, the the problem is down to the fact that there's a lack of punters because I've seen so many at different gigs in, in, in scenes that probably would never have been like a thing back in the day. Like I've seen, I went and seen like metal shows where it's all screamo and that's not my scene. And back then that was unheard of, but like, there's like 
like a thousand people in a room ready to see some metal bands. I think mm. that's cool as man. Like it's a well, government problem. We've seen that problem. with festivals. We've seen that yeah. with festivals. Yeah, exactly. Your downloads yeah. and your not fest. Yeah, and all not that. fest. Good things. Like they yeah, they yeah. they can't keep the tickets yeah. in the door. They're flying out. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but then other ones like where they uh, sort of phone the in half arsed. Yeah. What was the recent that got well, cancelled? Well, Music Festival. Yeah. Then we lost big. Well, not then, but um, uh, Groove in the Moo. Yeah. Um, uh, Splendor, Splendor in the grass. Splendor in the grass. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah. But like potentially, you could say the argument for Splendor in the grass is that they've tried to diversify too much no one knows what it's for anymore i think it may because there was a lot of people because i love the lineup like turnstile all that stuff like throw off that but i think it made me realize that maybe my music taste is in a, mon- a minority of some description and sp- maybe splendor is was known for something else sure you know what i mean and now maybe now it's not but again it's not a punter problem i think ticket prices are just almost unattainable now yeah um and that's a government problem um i don't know this episode's about you well there's there's, because all the overheads yeah the the price it makes for the most part logical sense yeah yeah based on the other contextual elements of this one does this thing and then there's the state yeah and there's the higher and then there's yeah all these things but yes the 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 star at the top of the tree yeah exactly is is a common link and where i was going to tie that in with you is the fact that um I'm the establishment and you hate me. Yeah, well, no, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, I I think with cost of living Mm -hmm. um, and everything going around, even being in two bands, uh, the prices of getting your car to Brisbane for a show back plus parking, you know, and you don't necessarily see any of that money. I'm not having a whinge, but being in as many bands as you are, is that another struggle that you have to factor into it or are you pretty – screwed on in terms of that you know what i mean i factor it in there's definitely a um there's definitely a sort of wins losses sort of discussion that's happening uh with with internally with the band yeah like some some bands i'm taking a cut some i'm not yeah yeah i suppose it it depends on a lot of variables but also i do have not that i don't work hard for it but i i do have a full-time job that i can yeah exactly yeah th- that i can yeah. if, if we are doing a big gig down in brisbane and it's yeah. with one of those bands where i don't see exactly. the initial income yeah well i can sort of write that off and yeah. be like well it is what it is it's a night out with Aaron as well, well exactly you know? hey. and the other thing yeah. is through dad through beach services sunshine coast i've had <laughs> i've had such a benefit of working with him in the business yeah, yeah, and from there doing these hybrid gigs, these, you know, yeah. cover gigs with Ben from the club where we play all of yeah. our originals but also covers to fill three hours and stuff yeah, yeah. and doing the same with the Justice Trio and such. Having those, those money makers can offset the fact that you go to play yeah. in Brisbane for, well, for a negative sum. Yeah. Because you know, yeah. 100, 150 bucks a, of, yeah, but then yeah. we're all driving separately so we're all That's paying $80 yeah, for parking. Yeah. You know, for, for that essentially zero to be in the black or even yeah. in the red after something offsets for me. And I try and find well, those little Easter eggs well, so that's that I can it, feel hey. that. And we kind of work, we work to support the thing we love. Yeah, th- yeah. that's it. And my no, boss yeah, yeah. is amazing for that. She says the exact same thing. She's like, you're yeah. working um, to fund your passion. Yeah, She's exactly. Like, I-, I completely yeah. understand what yeah. I am to you. I am the person that facilitates a job where you can fund your passion. She's exactly. like, marketing is what you do. Drummer, yeah. boyfriend, Son, that's yeah. who you are. Yeah, exactly. A eh? yeah. See, I, I, I think no. I, I honestly, man, I take my hats off to you because the preparation. Oh, two hats, mate. You could sell yeah, one, well, make look, a bit of a profit. Look, I'm about to give you a third. <laughs> no, I yeah. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> give it here. No, but I, I think, dude, like the preparation, the schedule, the amount of bands you play in, and having the time in a cost of living crisis. <laughs> Bailey, drummer. Uh, my final question to you is, yes. are you Jesus? <laughs> but you play mad drums, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Look, I, it's uh, thank you so much for sitting down with me and, and doing Hold this. On. Thank you, Bailey Drummer, for sitting oh. down with me and doing this with me today, uh, coming into my home. <laughs> You've been doing that ever since when I was living at home with mum and dad. He'd always like, he'd always come up and say, oh, I'm Jules, Lethal, how are you going, mate? So uh, I'm coming around tomorrow. Um, you know how I like my eggs scrambled? <laughs> and fuck off. The yeah. one time you did say that, we were already planning on doing like bacon and eggs yeah, or something. Bacon, yeah, yeah, when we yeah, recorded yeah. Grown Up, we didn't talk about Grown Up. Grown oh, Up. Yeah, no. Fuck we off. do need grown to talk up. about that. Grown Up. Something he needs to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. essentially Grown Up was a track that was born out of me basically not wanting to necessarily have my pipes on something and to Connor Hansen, yeah. and 
being an average guitarist at best, enter Can Tip It. And essentially I said, how about we throw this together? I already had um, the great fella from 80s Recall, Brian Gross, on the on the four strings. And really good bass line too. Yeah, really yeah. good bass line. Yeah. Very strong, Brian. Because um, he'd seen other stuff I'd done recently yeah. and said, hey, man, next time you do something, hit me up. I'm, I'm interested. Well, that's it. Grown Up is the, if you haven't heard it, is the thing that plays at the beginning of every Ask Oh, Wednesday yes. Podcast, I've actually, I don't think yeah. I yeah. have necessarily mentioned that. This yeah. Se- yeah, for the season four, the beginning, the exception of the Catching Salmon episode where we did put um, Mixed Bag at the end. Yeah, yeah. Grown Up is the great man on vocals um, and the yeah. other man doing the giggling at the end. Um, <laughs> is actually yeah for, for, for yeah. the podcast so yeah that's... which is a great song man like it instantly gave me there was this um, I, I drone on about them heaps eh? like one of my favourite bands from the start has been Oasis but mm-hmm. it had there was this one song they did on the last album that it gave me a vibe of great song and I was just I just I was just privileged to sing on it like you know what I mean and it was yeah. a great nod to and you were privileged to like, have me sing yeah, on yeah I was it. Yeah. I was great nod to <laughs> Connor Hanson um, yeah, yeah. what a beautiful hum- humble as ever humble king yes. yeah exactly yes. and also for those who didn't realise um, Connor has been on the podcast before he's my only return guest actually at this point which is um, yeah wait, well, wait, he's wait, actually not a return guest He's a single one-time co-host. Host, yes. No, not co-host. Well, I'm not hosting at all. I'm it's my return to the channel, however. I think I'm your most prominent dude because I've yeah, got Yeah, you and that. Jet have had a lot of features. Yeah, we've done yeah. gripes. We've done yeah. things we love. Love, We've yeah. also done yeah. Um, yeah. some guy that looks very similar to you who had a horrific addiction to playing guitar riffs at an opportune time. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy yeah, yeah, how yeah, yeah. the amount the, of things, things we've the done. The resemblance is uncanny. It's crazy the amount of things we've done since... We actually sat down. And did yeah, the pod. yeah because those, that was great, dude. That like was the funniest thing I've ever done. That was very funny. The thing is, though, you wouldn't know because it's essentially we do the pod. Yeah, hey, this is from Chamberlain. You've got a new song out called "Familiar Faces" and all yeah, this stuff. Yeah, yeah, blah yeah. blah blah. Great song too. Um, yeah, <laughs> <Why>? um, <laughs> yeah, good things become the old things or some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the the, the whole <laughs> essentially premise of that episode in the way it went was cool. It was one thing. Yeah. Turn the cams off. Go downstairs. He asked me a couple of questions that were a bit too poignant to be putting on air, and then the fire ignites. And it felt like we, a, we didn't feel bad about yeah, it because a lot of it yeah. was stuff that I wouldn't have necessarily shared on camera. But yeah, but like, I was like, "Fuck, you're my kindred spirit." Yeah, honestly though, it was like, that. and we have been it started thickest thieves ever since, dude. It started when like the first time I ever met you properly. Yeah, I was. I didn't realize you at this helped point. me carry. I didn't know Connor played music. Yeah, well, <laughs> he still doesn't. But he somehow knows the lyrics to some of the songs. It's a bit weird. Yeah. I, I think he's a bit of a stalker. It's all right. No, no it's all right. No worries. I, I look the. I remember carrying a table for you. You had a table, and that was the first oh, time I properly yeah. met you. I was you just like, oh, could you carry that table? I was like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Do, do you, you know said, who I what, fucking am? But what you said, what was, I actually said was, yeah, no worries, mate. Yes. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Can you sign my feet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still yet to do that. It was good, and we've like had a right, lot Andy of moments at the on bottom. Each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bailey, <laughs> drummer on the other. <laughs> Must be yeah. a good marker, but yeah, no, it's yeah, crazy. It's, and yeah, we've it. just sort of rifted off since then, and it was completely unexpected. I, I got him on the podcast. I wanted to chat yeah. with him. I knew he'd be a good talker. But from there, we just, yeah, the chat afterwards, which went for probably about as long as the pod, just catching yeah, up with mum and dad and then more, eh? seeing Aaron on the way out and then yeah, another no, 15 good, minutes man. at your car, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And from great. there, we've just sort of riffed I've it up. I've been over for then. Christmas dinners and all sorts, man. Like, literally. Like, literally. You saw dude, the first like, yeah. official sort of when we kindred named it, sort of had the namesake of the Justice Tree. Of the Justice yeah, Tree. You I actually did, saw yeah, the first yeah, time. Yeah. First time I ever played an original yeah. track because yeah. John played this chord progression and which, told Caleb about it and he said, yeah, we just wrote dude, our first song. Which was crazy because the boys didn't get that. So like I, me and Seth had seen the Justice Trio and we're around here for Christmas and I was like, oh, dude, you, you, like you need to see these boys. Like when we played with you at the, at the um, precinct that mm-hmm. time. Yep. And uh, I was like, dude, you need to see these boys play. Like they are awesome. So, how, just I was like, how how, have you, how do you know? They've only just started. I was like, mate, Christmas dinner, mate. Honestly, get it, get it, get it up here. Had, had a bit good. of Jules' yeah, Christmas yeah, dinner, mate. Yeah, he didn't say it like that. It was a lot nicer than how I've depicted Josiah in that um oh, that's rendition. Fine, that's it. That's yeah. fine. Don't yeah. You, yeah, you're just trying to impress me. Well, no, I am a bit. Yeah, no, it's good. Still, still to this day, I try and impress it, impress this guy. That's no, good. Well, yeah. I thank you for, Doug. Genuinely, thank you for um. Like actually approaching me to ask. Yeah, yeah, this wasn't. This, this wasn't. Bailey hasn't actually hit me up. <laughs> if you still made it to yeah, like the yeah. sixty-five minute uh, point or whatever we are in the episode he, right now, he didn't hit me up and go. 
Yeah, like, oh, I think you should ask me a question. Yeah. Could you come round <laughs> for yeah. a meal? Yeah. I've yeah. got the camera set up. <laughs> yeah, weird. Yeah, weird. How about yeah. you just ask yeah. me questions yeah. off your dome? Yeah. The only thing that we didn't, that, that you know, that changed was that he wanted me to do it naked and I was kind of like, Iffy know. on that. I'm, I'm still losing a little bit of uh, winter weight. So. <laughs> <laughs> winter weight. <laughs> so that's yeah. nice though. That, uh, well, you wore a nice black shirt yeah, and jacket, yeah, something yeah, slimming. Yeah, Makes yeah, it look like I don't understand how to heat or cool my home because you're wearing a jacket inside. Well, no, well, you know, <laughs> and you don't. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you know what was yeah. hot? Yeah. The free spaghetti bolognese. No, it, that was great actually, hey. And I might be around for another one if you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's no, good. Perfect, no, beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. it. Because right, you're only paying me for my time, which <laughs> is worth more than a free spaghetti, mate. So <laughs> I can get down and make me another couple dishes. <laughs> no, look, I'm honestly, it's been, thank you for coming into my my home, um, spending some time with me on my podcast. Um, I've been Connor Drummer. This, yeah, this is Bailey, Bailey from Chamberlain. And um, not yeah, gonna lie, the amount of people it. have actually said, "Do you play in Chamberlain?" Well, dude, I heard that on the jet, the podcast with Jet. Yeah, yeah buddy, Cherry, bless her. Um, yeah, a, p- a part of the precinct, co-owner of the precinct. She's like, um, "Do you play in Chamberlain?" And I was like, "Yeah, no, but you can put me on their beer list if you want." Yeah, well, that's obviously yeah. satirical and performance. Yeah, yeah. It definitely happened. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know. You can oh, you can give me their rider and all that kind of thing. Yeah, you can yeah. give me all the all yeah. the details. So that's, yeah, that's that went yeah. off there yeah. um, with with. Uh, you should take credit for that, that man. Was, that's um, a good band to be mistaken the... to be a part of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As little bands go, <laughs> you just turn around. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I do not play with that. No, band. mate. Bailey Walker, he's, he's cutting all this out, <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, he's yeah. cutting it in forty minutes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't yeah. even turn the cameras yeah. on, mate. No, I'm proud of myself. How did I do as a host? Any good? I think you did well. Like, yeah. Leave a comment. Leave a yeah. Actually, don't leave a rating. It'll bomb yeah. my ratings on, on Spotify <laughs> yeah. and Apple. Um, no, but leave a comment. Leave a rating. What did you think of Connor as the host? Yeah. Uh, I left out some of the questions that were a bit more personal, like if Jet and I were stranded on a desert island, who would you save? Um, don't have a boat. Yeah. <laughs> don't look, have a boat, boys. That's leave, the answer. You'd... Whenever you've got a question where yeah. it's like, would you pick me or your mum? Yeah. First of all, you always say your mum. Yeah. But then second of all, you say, sorry, love, don't have a boat. Yeah, well, that's it. And yeah. then you dump her because she's clearly a psycho. Yeah, of course, of but, course. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so you'd probably pick me over Jet though <laughs> if you did have access to a boat. <laughs> so, guys, uh, another episode <laughs> in the can. That's it. As you know, yeah. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, that's all the places to find these. I'm on the fancy camera today. I'm in the, I'm in the guest seat. And how much better was this than the Jet Houston episode? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, no, before he gets even more, I don't know, Connor, um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for actually watching through here. It's been a pleasure, and I really appreciate you asking me questions and catching up with me. You are uh, a, a true friend, a true, true sort of owner of camaraderie in, in the scene as well, and I appreciate everything oh, you thanks, do, man. and I appreciate when you reach out to me and say, hey, man, I don't know if I'm being in contact for a couple of weeks, but I just wanted to let you know that I've watched the last 12 videos you've yeah. made, and you know I love what you do for the industry and stuff. That That's very special to me, and um, it's very special to have you in my life and to be able to do the oh, things thanks, we do. Um, it's and very special to have you in my life. And if you've made it this far which Jet probably has. Then it's very um, special to have you in our, in our lives and, and I want you to know, Jet, I do love you. I am in a band with him after all. Yeah, so big big shout out for this episode. Big shout out for this episode to Chamberlain, The Drop Beers, Jet, um, Johnny Justice, yep. the great man, Connor Hansen. Um, until next time. I'll see you later on my, on my next episode of Ask a Muso podcast brought to you by Yellow Music. No, that's not how you end it. And Chamberlain. No, okay, no, we're not, okay. We're not doing that. Okay, okay. so... So, guys, and you got to do the chakra as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So Until next time. Until next time. See you later. Okay. And, and also, the pause, and like Aaron, Aaron always zings me about this, whenever, yeah. like, and I'm sure mum and dad do at home. They, mm-hmm. they, they are on the fucking edge of their seats waiting for the pause. <laughs> I'll say something, you know, so until next time, guys, I'll see you later. And it's just like, yeah. oh, we fucking waited so long. So go yeah, for it. Be I respectful will. with the pause. So it's like, you know, so as always, blah, 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 YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, yeah. you know that. And until next time, I'll see you later. Go for it. All right. Be respectful with the pause. You're asking the wrong guy. I know. Respect, Connor. Oh, Incongruent terms. That's been a fantastic episode of Ask a Muso. You can stream it on Apple Music, Spotify. Apple Podcasts. No, oh, you're oh, going to oh, do no, it again. Okay, okay. Apple Podcasts. All right, I've got, yes, to, I've got okay. to What a fantastic episode of Ask a Muso podcast brought to you by Chamberlain. You can stream it on <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. And until next time. I'll see you later. <laughs> oh, fuck, that was good. That was good. Thanks, guys. <laughs>